Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Today I'm using the Floral Essence stamp and the Perennial Essence paper. Now, I've used a lot of this paper already and you know how much I love it. But I'm going to use this piece of paper today. It's got a beautiful background with this blueberry bushel, but I'm using the flowers again. And I will be using the punch as well. And I'm only actually using two stamps from it. I'm using this flower and the little sentiment that says, with friendly thoughts and best wishes today and every day. And that way I can use it for a birthday. I can use it for a thinking about you card or a get well card. There's lots of things you can use the sentiment for. And I thought this would be quite a versatile one to have in the box, just ready for when I need a card. It is a very simple card to make and it's going to be a little gatefold card. And normally when we make gatefold cards, we have them sort of this way up and the two edges meet in the middle. And then sometimes you'll put a, a piece on the front that you'll open and then all your sentiments inside. But this time we're going to make it just the same way. We're going to make the sides a little bit narrower as you can see and then our white piece of card that's going to be in the middle is going to work as a sentiment for both the outside and the inside. So it will look like this. Let's just get that a little bit straighter. And so you will see this on the outside of the card and then as you open the card you'll see it again and you can have your writing at the top and the bottom. And let me just get the things out that we're going to need and check that you can see on the um, video whereabouts my card is. Yeah, that works. Okay, so the first one I cut was Mossy Meadow, but when I was using the paper, which does have Mossy Meadow as a colour, I didn't have a lot of this green in the piece I'd cut. So I changed and I'm using the Rich Rattleberry instead and you need a piece cut at five and a half by seven and three quarters and this really is just from a half piece of cardstock and whereas normally it will be eight and a half over here I just took that three quarters of an inch off the end. I'm going to need to score and I'm going to score it at one and three quarter inches at that side and one and three quarter inches at that side and rather than taking the arm out on the trimmer like this and putting it through and measuring it up I'm just going to do it the easy way I'm going to do one and three quarters at each side so I'm going to put it in on the longest side on the seven and three quarter side line it up at one and three quarters over at the top here and just using my score blade I'm just going to score then I'm going to turn it round and do exactly the same so I'm going to line it up at one and three quarters and score. And that's it. And then as you can see from my green one, once these are folded in, they make that little gate fold with the gap down the middle. This is the side I scored on, so I'm going to bend them under from there. Now, You'll notice that I've got some white ink on here and I'll show you where I got that from in a few minutes. You won't actually see it on the card, but it was from the ink that I'm using for the card. Okay, let's just fold these over. There. And then I'm just going to put that on one side because we'll need it again in a few minutes. The next thing we need is some vellum. Now, stamping up vellum is very thick. They actually call it cardstock vellum. It's not one of those thin, wispy sheets um, that you can tear really easily when you don't even want to. It is a thick, thick vellum, and that makes it beautiful for embossing or for stamping on. But it does take a little bit longer to dry on vellum than it does on cardstock. And I'm just going to get my little piece of vellum that I've got. This is just a little scrap that I have out. And I'm going to get a little piece of card as well. So that you can see what I'm doing. 
and I'm going to stamp with the Whisper White ink. Now this is a pigment ink, it's not like our other inks like this, which is a water-based ink. And it's quite a thick ink and sometimes it can look almost gloopy. It, it, it is quite thick and it takes a long while to dry unless you use something like a, a heat gun um, to dry it with. You see, I've already got ink over and that's where I got this ink from. I'd stamped for my practice and then I put my, um, my block down and this was the lines off the block. As I say, for this card, it doesn't matter, but uh, it is one of those things that it takes a long time to dry, so be careful. So I've just got the little um, petal, the three petal shape, this one here. I should put that on my block and I'm going to dab the white ink on. And if you're inking onto the white vellum on a white piece of paper, it's quite tricky to see. So I always just pop mine on a, a piece of card so that I can see whereabouts the vellum edges are and everything. And I'm going to hold that on for just a few seconds. And you need to stamp this twice. At the moment, it looks like you can hardly see it, but as it uh, dries a little bit, you can start to see the white a bit more. Almost like a Versamark ink on um, cardstock where it becomes darker but on this vellum it's a bit tricky to see okay you can probably see this one a bit better because i held it for longer you see just a a very subtle white line and that's the only inking we're doing i'm going to put it on one side because i don't want any more and I'm just going to wipe my hands because I've already got white ink on them. And because it doesn't dry fast, it stays wet on your skin as well. So I'm just going to make sure I've got it off. Put it off my fingers here. There we are. Okay, and I'll move this out of the way because it was only a piece of scrap. Okay. So I'm going to do the rest of my stamping while I've got stamping things out. So next I'm going to need just my black memento ink and this little saying from here is just the right size for this card. Now I have a piece of white card. This is the piece that I stamped for the demonstration piece that I was showing you. But just a piece of white card at five and a quarter by four and I'm just going to place it in here, right in the middle of the card. Now, I don't want it to move because I want to stamp on it when the flaps are already folded. So if you don't want it to move and you feel better about doing this, pop a little glue dot on in the middle or you know, one at each edge or something like that. Pop it down, make sure it's got a nice border all the way around it and then you know you're safe for stamping it's not going to move at all just make sure that you don't put these glue dots or if you're using snail or something just make sure you haven't got it right in the middle where your stamping is going to be else you might get a bump okay so there we are I'm just going to go over that with my bone folder again and I'm going to stamp my sentiment over to the right hand side here Sure, I've got some some ink on there and that it's the right way around and then I'm just going to line it up with that center piece there I just have to stand up for this just to make sure that I've got it in the middle there we go there and put the lid on that because that's the end of our stamping Now, before I finish the card, I will just take this off and do our little glue dots. And then I'm going to stick the whole thing down. And you can use snail or Tombow, whatever adhesive you want. Pop this back so that it's right in the middle again. Yep, that's right. 
So now we're going to decorate the outside of our card. And I've cut my DSP. It's only one and a half inches wide and it's five and a quarter inches long. And I'm just going to attach that one to the top and one to the bottom. Now, if you're not quite sure of the measurements on here, if you go on to my blog, mycraftsbythebow.blogspot.com, you'll find all the measurements on there. So you don't need to worry about stopping the video and uh, writing down and then rewinding to see what I said. You can just look on the blog and all the things will be there that you need, including the stamp set that I bought, uh, that I used, and the inks, and the punch. Okay, now let's have a look at that vellum. It isn't quite dry, so I'm not going to punch this one. I'm going to use the ones I punched earlier. But I did just punch with the matching punch for the floral essence stamps. And here's the two that I punched much, much earlier. I'll lay them across there. You can see it's very, very difficult to see the white on the vellum until you get it on the card. And then it just stands out just that little bit. I'm going to use two other punches. I've got my two and a quarter inch circle punch and my two inch circle punch. And I've cut a white piece just whisper white thin in the two and a quarter and a piece of the matching base card which is the rich raspberry in the two inch and I'm going to attach those together I'm not going to attach them to the card yet though let's put those two together and then I'm going to put my little flower on let's see I'm going to put them on just with my glue dots as well that way the glue dots don't show through the um, the vellum as much as some of the adhesives might you can see just a little dot there but I'm going to be putting an embellishment or a little um, little circle of card on or something anyway so you won't really see that okay and then using my bone folder I'm just going to fold up a little bit now, I know some of the thinner vellums that I used to use, if you used your bone folder like this, you might tear the vellum, but uh, Stampin' Ups is thick enough that it doesn't tear. Okay, so this is going to be a little piece that's going on the card. And it's going to go just here at the left-hand side so that you can still see the writing. And it's only going to be glued onto this top flap so that you can open it like this. So I only need a little bit of glue just at this top piece. You can do that with glue dots if you'd rather. That's about where I want it. Now, for this little circle here, you can either use a small punch and punch out, let me find my tiny punches. In here, no, nope, not that one. I think that one's a bit too tiny. That one, the half inch punch, you could punch out, use one of the other colours that you can see, or you could use a faceted gem or um, a few of our little rhinestones, put sort of a little group of five in there or something. I'm just going to try and match up one of these other colours. And this is Flirty Flamingo. I know it's not Flirty Flamingo, but I think it is this petal pink. So I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny little circle out like this, and I'm just going to attach it there, right in the middle. And I'll attach that with a glue dot. If you don't have those tiny little punches, you can um, probably find one of your dies that's got a little circle or a little flower shape in and use that instead, or as I said, use one of the little um, rhinestones or you know, just a, a combination of embellishments would work. Even a little sequin would look really pretty. Actually, a little sequin would look really nice on top of there as well. So there we are, that's it. I told you it was a simple card. It's really pretty and it's a nice one to receive. 
if, and I have seen some other demonstrators make cards similar to this and do the same kind of thing, you can put a little stopper on here just to stop it opening all the time. And some people might use uh, like a, maybe a little, another little circle or another little flower put on with a dimensional. So it gives a little bit of height and it just stops that flap opening. I've seen some people put a little brad on there as well and um, the brad will be just sticking out slightly and it will catch on the brad or even a ribbon or twine. So that's, if you want that to stay down, that's a, a good thing to use. But there we are, that's my card for the day using my beautiful, beautiful floral essence set and uh, the beautiful paper that goes with it. But you don't need much paper and there's very little stamping. So it's a great easy card if you want to make uh, a batch of cards and you want to make them all the same, maybe change the DSP and the colours, but you want to make a batch to have in your box to give out or if you want to use them for classes. Well, thank you very much indeed for watching me everybody. Don't forget to look at the blog for all the card sizings and everything. And if you have any questions, just drop me a line or comment on the bottom of the video and I can easily get back to you and let you know anything that you might have missed. If you would like to order any of the items I've used, you can have a look on my either on my blog or my Facebook page because my 24 hour shop is there. And don't forget for the next two weeks until the end of July, for every $60 you spend, Stampin' Up! will send you a $6 coupon to use in August. Well, thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye everyone.